we're just learning right now after multiple tornadoes touched down, at least 14 people are now confirmed dead. And you can just see a breathtaking path of destruction in these images we're getting from our affiliates there. Joining us now is the coroner of Lee County, Alabama, Bill Harris. And Bill, first, condolences to you, your community, for this devastation that you're experiencing. You think, I understand, there's a good chance that this death toll is still going to rise. Why? Uh, very well could. I, uh, my understanding, I'm I'm about a mile from where most of the destruction has taken place, and it's my understanding that they still have not been able to get to parts of that area as they're going through the, the houses and rubble looking for people. Oh, that is gut-wrenching to hear. Walk me through what happened when this tornado ripped through. Uh, it was in a rural area south of Opelika, Alabama. Uh, it came on pretty sudden. They had fair warning, and then it uh, just hit with a vengeance, and uh, it just destroyed a very large area. And uh, I, I don't even know how many people were injured, but just uh, multiple, multiple injuries. They, in fact, they are still pulling uh, injured people out every now and then and, and transporting them for treatment to the hospital. And, and what are you seeing? I'm not at the scene where all the destruction is, but I've gotten reports from the people that are uh, out there, my deputy coroner's that are retrieving the decedents. And uh, he said it's just total destruction. Coroner, stay with me. I, I still want to come back to you, but I want to bring in as well Lee County Sheriff Jay Jones. I know, Sheriff, you are at the scene. Walk me through what you have observed and the current state of play, the situation on the ground right now. We have a, a pretty significant area of damage. Uh, is located about six miles south of the city of Opelika. We're in the southern portion of Lee County, uh, north of U.S. Highway 80. Um, I would uh, possibly as much as a half a mile wide uh, trail of destruction and traveling several miles to the east when the storm uh, touched down. Uh, we have multiple residences that have been completely destroyed. And uh, it appears at this time that we have uh, 14 confirmed fatalities. And are you still pulling people out of the rubble? Are first responders still working through the debris? Uh, our priority, of course, is search and rescue at this time. That's been continuing since uh, the moment the, the storm passed. Uh, we're continuing those efforts now. We're hampered, of course, by darkness at this point in time. Uh, but we do have some canine teams that are uh, coming into the area. Uh, again, uh, darkness is uh, a factor. And, of course, uh, the, the, the significance of the debris and the damage uh, also is uh, hampering efforts, but they, we are making efforts. In terms of the injuries, what can you tell us about those? We had several injuries. Uh, I do not have an exact number, but I do know there were several individuals transported to our regional medical center in Opelika for treatment, and some of those injuries were significant. You mentioned darkness. We can see in some of the pictures we've seen now on the ground, there's a lot of debris everywhere. What is the biggest challenge? Uh, the challenge is, is just the sheer amount of, of, of damage and debris that's uh, all through the areas where the homes were located. Uh, it literally tore these residences completely apart. And, uh, of course, it's a hazardous uh, area, as you might imagine. And that's, of course, something that the, the search and rescue personnel are having to contend with. Uh, as in any situation like this. But uh, uh, again, they're continuing those efforts uh, and we're gonna go as long as we can this evening. When you tell us that at least 14 people are dead in this tornado, can you tell us any more about these victims or children among the dead? Um, I, there are some juveniles uh, involved in the, uh, the fatality situation, uh, adults as well. Um, I, I do not have a, a breakdown of that, uh, but unfortunately we, we do have some some younger people involved. I'm sad to hear that. How does this damage that you're seeing there compare to other storms that may have hit Alabama in the past? Uh, this is the most significant damage from a storm that I've seen in, in Lee County in many, many years. Um, I'm sure it uh, would, would match up with what uh, we've seen in some of the other areas in Alabama in the last few years. Um, this is not a, a uh, an urban area. It is a rural area. Uh, that, uh, of course, but um, uh, as far as the damage, uh, it, it, in what I'm seeing, it's, it's uh, the most I've seen and uh, that I can recall. You're holding it together in such a good way, which I know you have to, in part because of the role that you have for the community there. But what's going through your mind right now? Uh, just all these people that uh, have lo lost their loved ones, of course. So we, we, we pray for these families. Um, they're going to have a, a tough time ahead. Uh, the others who have lost everything they have, 
uh, and are homeless at this point, literally. Uh, we're certainly going to do everything we can to get the resources to them to help them. Uh, this is uh, something this community pulls together. Uh, this area is, is significant. We had volunteers coming from everywhere earlier this afternoon wanting to help just anything they could do at all. Uh, people respond well, and uh, we, we've got a lot of people on scene helping. Um, back to our, our corner who's joining us, Bill Harris. Bill, we we're hearing children may be among the dead. In your experience, how, have you ever had an, any experience like this? Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, back when the tornadoes ripped through North Alabama, and I believe it was in April of 2011, our escort team was deployed to North Alabama where the devastation was, was terrible up there and, and just multiple, great more fatalities in that, that storm than there were in this one. But uh, this is a small dead community. That their people are coming together. Uh, I've had family start showing up now at my center, command center, looking for people that they can't find. And uh, hopefully they'll be at the hospital and just injured. But uh, now the task is to identify the decedents that we do have and then get in touch with those families to let them know what's happened. And, Sheriff, what should families do now? Well, at this point, we're trying to um, make sure that the uh, individuals that were residents in this area, that uh, they report to their families, let them know that, that they're okay. Uh, that's going to be significant. That'll help uh, to narrow down our search efforts if we can locate individuals that uh, lived in this general area and report into us and let us know they're okay. That, that would help us a lot. So you still have people who are unaccounted for? Yes, ma'am. We, we do have some people that have not been accounted for. Do you believe people had enough warning? I, 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 was, uh, I, I know that there was a warning being broadcast by our local media. Uh, so there, there was a, a warning in effect at the time that the storm came through. Wow, just incredible damage. Um, Sheriff, thank you for joining us, as well as Bill Harris, the coroner. Uh, we know you guys have a lot of work to do. Uh, thank you both again for being our eyes and ears, helping to inform our viewers, our thoughts, our prayers, um, sending best wishes to your whole community. Let's get over to CNN meteorologist Tom Sater now in the CNN Weather Center. Uh, Tom, this sounds just awful in terms of the damage we talked to somebody with the national weather service who says preliminarily they're believing this could have been at least an ef3 tornado yep. Yep, possibly talk to a us four. a little bit more about that well the, the survey crews are going to go out and they're going to look at that damage t tomorrow uh, it could be an ef4 too possibly but when we talked earlier on it we said that this could have been what we think is a wedge tornado it's not the image that we typically see of your rope kind of uh, image of a tornado a wedge has an extremely large bottom surface area, so the destruction is so much wider. Uh, and therefore, you'll see the aerial pictures of just homes completely destroyed or off their slabs. We are getting some uh, good news, and that is the intensity of some of these thunderstorms are now losing all the ingredients they need to continue to produce tornadoes. We still have a few warnings, and this is the watch box. It's in effect until 11 p.m. That includes parts of Georgia and South Carolina. If we have a few tornadoes spin up, they're going to be on the southern end of this line through the panhandle of Florida, moving into south and southeastern areas of Georgia. Good news is we had a tornado warning knocking on the door for Columbia, South Carolina. That is no longer in effect. It's a severe thunderstorm warning. But when you look at the area of concern right now, this is Panama City, so the line has moved through to the east. But we have a couple of warnings now in effect. That's going to take it close to Tallahassee or just to the south if it continues. To the north, though, we're losing. Now that we've lost the, the daylight, the heating of the day, we're going to lose some of that intensity. So Columbia is under a, a severe thunderstorm warning. And then south of Savannah. But when we go back and you asked uh, again about the warning, was there a warning? There was. I mean, we had probably almost three dozen tornado warnings. Some are radar confirmed rotation. Some are visuals. And again, if you look at the line from Tuskegee, Alabama, across the border to Columbus, Georgia, we had a couple of uh, thunderstorm cells that dropped tornadoes. It wasn't just one uh, thunderstorm cell. Eufaula Airport, we had damage there. Before we even had reports of this possible wedge tornado, we had earlier reports of people trapped in homes, uh, trapped uh, in service stations on state uh, interstate uh, 80, state highway 80. Uh, Warner Robins, south of Macon by about seven miles. So there's a lot of surveying that the crews are going to do. It's just unfortunate now that we've lost daylight. And for these first responders and crews that are out there, they're working in darkness with the exception of getting any kind of light. And I'm sure they're bringing in as much as they can. Tuskegee, 
Columbus, this is Beauregard, that's the first cell that moved through, and then the second, unfortunate, just a terrible day. Terrible day. Last weekend, we had an outbreak of tornadoes. That was in the Mississippi-Alabama border. Today, we had a, a big risk with the thousands that you know that were outdoors in Montgomery, Alabama for the commemoration of the March on Selma. They had a line of severe weather move through. It wasn't violent until after it passed through that Selma area, which was good news there. Then you're looking at the other end of this two-headed monster, and that's the heavy snow that you're getting uh, up in New York and toward uh, Boston. We could see anywhere between, you know, five inches to over a foot in some areas. But at least the severe weather threat trying to come to an end. The panhandle of Florida is still a concern into southeastern Georgia.